That's exactly it. None of us are experts in front row play. Uh, Louise, how are you? Not too bad, yeah. Alan, welcome back. Thank you, Ger. Um Nobody really expected this, and yet at the same time, the way that South Africa performed was exactly how you would expect South Africa to perform. So England should have expected a bit more and done something to counteract what the South Africans were doing, right? They should have, but I actually just think I, I highlighted this um, on air just after the, the New Zealand game. I think England just focused so much physically and emotionally on that New Zealand game that they just never seem to get back up to the highs. I don't think that they're going to turn around and say they didn't expect uh, an attritional game and such a strong set piece from the South Africans. I just think they, they had nothing to answer to it. You know, the, the kind of back-to-back -back nature of, of World Cup rugby got to them and they never really got over that Kiwi game. So South Africa were actually, they benefited from the fact that they had a relatively easy path to the final? Oh, I think they did, yeah. yeah. Well, they didn't have that kind of emotional high and we saw that with New Zealand, I think, um, when they beat... Ireland so convincingly um, it can be sometimes the worst thing that can happen to you you know when you have a performance in sport where you get the job done and you realise we were lucky or we didn't play that well and you've loads of stuff to work on and semi-finals are, are strange we, we played a semi-final in 2008 we were terrible against Saracens in Coventry could have lost the game and we were just you know you're you're trying to prepare for that scenario that you don't want to be in that scenario. Every team wants to keep playing well, but we've seen that at the World Cup, you know, New Zealand, the high they had against Ireland, then England kind of um, rattled them and, and and knocked them by, off their perch. And then South Africa did that for in, to England for the final. So what Louise is saying, it, it, rugby, in more than any other sport, and I stand corrected in this, but I think because of the physical nature, you can have brilliant form going into any game and if you don't win the collisions and you're not physically and emotionally really up for it. And as a kid, I was always told, and I remember to this day, and it's so true, it's simple, you know, beating your opposite number, being physically aggressive, getting that first tackle in, it gets you into the game and it gives you a real feel that you can outmuscle the opposition. It doesn't matter how good he is technically or tactically, but you have to f physically and getting that physical emotion up is a challenge for rugby because you know you can be in, as I said you can be in brilliant form but if you get smashed every time and you're getting a really aggressive and, and force you into mistakes and then your set piece goes as well Ger. weren't England supposed to be good enough though didn't weren't they wasn't this a, a squad that had the the physical prowess to deal with whatever it was that's how they had plus the brain power. They were supposed to be, well, yeah. look, we've got these, we've got this magnificent system. We've got the outside backs that have the pace that can match your outside backs. We've got a number eight and a centre who are big enough to be able to get over the game line no matter what. And none of it, none of it happened. Yeah, but again, I'm going to follow on with what kind of Alan's there about that whole getting that, that physical battle, that the emotional element to that. That did they. Did they come down early enough after that Kiwi win? Because any any sports like you talked to understand just you can't stay at that level. You can't just go from one weekend to the next super hyped. And I know you could say they're professional, they know all this, Eddie Jones knew all that, but it's still very difficult to do because they've never been put in that position before. That was probably the game of their lives. Eddie for a lot Jones of them. has. He was in a World Cup final in two thousand three and exactly the same thing happened to him where the the great Australian team fell in the final. Now they actually perform much better than the, his English team did. So he should have been like Able the world and this. the world and his mother knew that this have, was a big threat this week, was making sure that they had sure, to get up first. They would have done everything right. Do you know what I mean? People speculate who don't know what it's like to be in there, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, but they would have done everything right this week, England. They had an extra day's recovery, they would have trained well, they would have spoken about, they knew what was coming, you know what I mean? But it's, sometimes there's no explanation. Of, you probably need a sports psychologist to get into the real fine or tiny little details of that 1% or 2%. South Africa had a real cause, aside from it being a big, big prize to win a World Cup. But the whole country, all that stuff, it can just create a different beast inside you. Like, I remember playing French teams in those back-to-back -back European games. You, We beat the lard out of them in Thoman Park. And a week after, you go there and you say, this is not the same player I played last week. It's just, he's an animal. He's gone to a different level. He's killing me every time I touch the ball. They're uber aggressive. They're narky. They're mean. And that's the intrigue of that kind of sport, that physical combat. So England had all the cards as regards the, the physical power, the finesse, 
the confidence, the belief. And they did it two weeks in a row. So they did it against Australia and they did it against New Zealand. But it was just that one step too far. And the one team who can really unsettle you is South Africa. And in fact, you know, they probably they kicked the ball 24 times, whereas they were up in the mid-30s for all the other games. Mm. They actually didn't kick that much. But the one-out runners and the little bit of variation, their footwork just caught England a little bit by surprise. So tactically, South Africa did pre- pre- present a different test. Yeah, they did. And actually, in their, they obviously played four times in, in 2018. The last game in Twickenham, England won 12-11. But South Africa did cause a bit of trouble and play with a bit more width than we had been seeing during the World Cup. Um, so it's probably not massively surprising that they could then bring this to that game. But it was whether they were going to do it or not. And... Like the thing with Razzie that I think anyway, Alan, you, you might correct me here, is that he got a group of players. We knew they had incredible pace and steppers and everything on the wing and we were lamenting that they weren't using them. But they had a game plan and they had excellent clarity around that game plan. And that's one thing you need with any team is that you have buy-in from the coach and you have to say from a 30 man, well, 31 man squad, they had, you could see they completely trusted Razzie and his backroom team. Complete buy-in and whatever he said went super clarity around all of their roles and when they wanted them mix it up a little bit in the in the final and play but with a little bit of individual brilliance but they can build so much pressure so their game plan is very very simple it's not expansive they don't throw the ball around willy nilly yeah um the clerk had kicked the ball 57 times from scrum half before he came into the the final so neil francis said it was joe schmidt's game plan yeah, it was, but it's implemented with bigger physical men and more power. And, it, and and sometimes that's rugby, you know what I mean? You can have all this finesse and and wit in your game, but if you're not, if your set piece isn't good, and if you're bringing on after 45, 50 minutes, um, the players, the power um, of Vincent Koch, Kitsoff, um, props coming on, when you have the scrum already rattled and they're coming on, they're saying, right, we've 30 minutes and we can just throw everything at it. And that's where the game was won and lost. I think there was a crucial period just after half time where England um, got a penalty from a line out Farrell kicks. They brought it back to six. He missed a kick. It could have been three points. Yeah. And then the other one before half time where England had 26 phases, yeah. they just defended if their lives depended on it. They went back for the penalty, um, kicked the penalty. But that was a big win, win, win for South Africa. So what Nienenbar has done, and the Munster players spoke about this, to give someone belief in defence, and def- defence can become so enjoyable when you're defending if you know that the guys around you are, are, are just mad for it. They're mad for tackles. They know what they're doing. There's a real energy about it. And, and physically, they can back it up. So, you know, they just unsettled England completely. And then, like, they didn't create anything. The try from a pimpy was just a bit of brilliance with the kick through um, from Am. And then Colby at the end, the ball comes loose. It's, it's dislodged in a tackle. So... Like I said, after after you know England New Zealand in the semi final, you the, both teams play a week later, and it's a different story. England can win that by ten fifteen points. It's just on the day you get that emotion right, and you know some people will say, well, that sounds crazy, but rugby more than any other sport, maybe an NFL or something like that, where you can physically smash your opposition. You can't do it in football, can you? You can't go out and take the legs out from under a guy in soccer because he's he's been better than you but if some guy if you want to get the better of your opposition you know winning those physical collisions and having I think South Africa and this is probably the key to it South Africa had a fear that if they England played they were going to lose a World Cup final and it was going to be massive disappointment they looked like a team that had two weeks off South Africa they were so energised by the simplicity of what they had to do England had the extra day off and they looked but I thought Eng- England disrespected them a little bit they're trying to run the ball behind their own goal, goal line after five minutes that's very very risky business but what Rassi Erasmus has done has been phenomenal because two years ago Ireland beat them 38-3 in Dublin they lost to Italy that November a lot of the same players um, what he's done is instilled an unbelievable belief and a confidence in them and Alad Waters, who worked with Munster, the Welsh guy, the fitness guy, he's got him fitter, more endurance. Um, and obviously we have a World Cup winner now in Felix Jones. So uh, I, I think what they've done collectively, and you know, I, I did the South Africa-Canada game, and just to see the smiles in their faces and the... Well, what was Felix doing, do we know? He was doing a lot of different stuff, because I asked him, and he was doing technical skills, kicking game, um, and and doing defence as well, but not solely, because Jack Meenenberg was doing that, but he was 
they, they had him involved in an awful lot of things that were going on and uh, he brought a lot of energy and different ideas as well. So it was a real shrewd move. I think initially we thought it was because Ireland would play South Africa in the quarterfinal. And, uh, and, um, but I think what Rassi Erasmus has done and I think it's just amazing the reaction now to Eddie Jones because, you know, every like including myself, I thought they were phenomenal and I said before the World Cup I thought they'd win it. Um, but, you know, the, the reaction now is... Is, is a lot of neg- negativity and a little bit over the top in the English press. Uh, Andy Dunn was saying on Friday's show that the 2007 Rugby World Cup win for South Africa set the game back about three years. What What's the legacy of this have on coaching now, Louise? Do you think it's a situation where every coach is going to go in and pick six forwards on their bench from now on? Well, I think it's a little bit of a horses for courses thing as well because that is the South African, that's traditionally what they're, what they're very strong at. I mean, do we have, for example, in Ireland, do we have that size of man do we have enough of them to put six fours in the bench? We probably don't. So it's, you know, I don't think the Kiwis, for example, are going to turn around and start doing that. Um, I think it's an example of, OK, this is what we're particularly good at. This is how we can arm wrestle a World Cup. So we're going to do it. We're going to absolutely implement it to the highest accuracy level. So I don't think necessarily so because it's more about the, the tr- traditional way that South Africa play and how Razi saw that he could, with that group of players, win a World Cup um, or I hope so anyway as, as a back and I think if if they'd won the World Cup final on playing like they did in the other pool games uh, mauling slowing things down kicking from the clerk I think that would have a real negative uh, leave a real negative impact on the World Cup but actually the way they played it and the pace they did it and the way they executed it in, in the final um, takes away a little bit from that um, you know but there is a concern that are we going back to a little bit of that squeeze the life out of the opposition and, and form goes out the window? The, the the team that plays the expansive rugby may not win. Um, yes. Somewhere in the middle. Yes, yeah. we are. Yeah, though. Like, that's what probably, just won. Yeah, probably. And Joe Schmidt uh, identified that and, if, and if, decided that's how we were going to play. And yeah, but I mean, you know, we've had back to back winners then in like New Zealand, we weren't saying, oh, you know, everyone's going to implement this game plan. And it's a bit like Anthony just said if you, if you, or Alan, sorry. <laughs> If you go next week, England plays South Africa, England could win by 10, 15 points. Through throw New Zealand into that again. If New Zealand plays South Africa, I know it is the World Cup final. It is the the ultimate goal. But are they the outright, you know, number one in the world if they play New Zealand next week or England a week later? Well, maybe not necessarily so because teams adapt and evolve to game plan. Some things will never change in rugby. Your set piece, the physical collisions. Um, and and knowing a, a simple game plan for the first number of phases for sure because you can't you can't just throw the ball around early on in games and after a couple of phases but it's that expansive but when you have someone like Colby on the wing and, and Mapimpi on the other wing um, they didn't get a lot of ball throughout the tournament but if you go back to the first game against New Zealand their pressure and their the way they were playing and the pace of their game was really good uh, but they revert back to type sometimes. So there's a negative side, very negative side to the way they play as well. But Rassi said it, and, and you can't argue with him now because he said, well, two years ago when he took over, they were very, very disjointed. They and terrible, they, yeah. they didn't really they, know they, they which way they were trying to play. They didn't have a strategy about their overseas players, and he fixed all that really quickly. So the so. foundation more that he mentions, Jerry, is important for any team. It's how you build on that and have some variation because in the Northern Hemisphere we're going to come up against horrendous weather and yeah, times through the winter and stuff and you know you need a good kicking game you need a pressure game and, and they execute all that stuff brilliantly it's just the other side of it um, that we would concern me that teams now will try and go well we need to maul we need to pick extra forwards on the bench I hope it doesn't happen It's almost as if having players dotted around different geographical locations might actually help a team out Yeah well they're getting ideas you know mm. they're picking their, their their players outside of South Africa is obviously a benefit to them and obviously when you win you start looking at these things and say they, they've worked but ultimately what Rassi Erasmus has done and the role of the head coach will never ever change as regards getting the timing right and their run here was they were right down here and he just built those blocks all the way through and I, I looked at the World Rugby Awards yesterday and I was just thinking Jesus 12 months ago that was you know, Joe Schmidt yeah, yeah. was on stage Rory Best was on stage we were team of the year player of the year yeah. all that stuff so we got our timing wrong dramatically wrong there's no way on earth though that we could have beaten this South African team is there in, in this World uh, Cup at this point I think well, we could have Wales Wales um, Wales troubled them last week and um, you know, ultimately the physicality would probably yeah. cost us in the That's end. The thing. So that if England we had a similar team. game plan, then 
you know, they're going to muscle us if, if we're going to play a similar game plan to them. That England team killed us twice in the last 12 months, but once when it really mattered in the EVO, they absolutely battered us physically. And that England team was absolutely battered physically by that South African team. So you've got to assume that South African team just holds us at bay. Like I wouldn't say they were battered physically. I, ba- I wouldn't say battered. I think their set piece was... Sinclair was a big loss to them. The scrum went awry. These mis- mi- mistakes can start... They couldn't start the line forcing at a little bit. Yeah. Like... Um, but we've we've had that before against South Africa and, and you know it's nothing new uh, where they're going to pressurise you in the scrum and line out um, so uh, for some strange reason they they well it's not strange I think they just he, he assembled a group of players who really believed in him and they kept speaking about that and it can have a massive effect and it's cup rugby so I think in a one-off and I said this before in the quarterfinals a one-off against South Africa or New Zealand, we have a better chance against South Africa because physically New Zealand can batter you as well, but their execution can be so much better, yeah. which they did to us, whereas South Africa can't don't punish you as much with the skill set. So if you're actually, and you know, you can get up for the physicality if you're really been, if you're fearful about that. So we would have had a better chance against South Africa. Ultimately, we probably, we would have lost the game anyway. Um, the damage was done the Japan loss you know what I mean after all the momentum I, I, we're not going back in Ireland are we <laughs> but um, you know we started off brilliantly and then that Japan result but um, it's uh, it was massive disappointment but I think South Africa winning the winning is 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 a huge story and I, I felt for England because I thought they played some brilliant rugby and like you, Louise is saying as well if the final is on next week and they get a chance, but you don't get a chance to atone, you know, that's the reality of it. But, like, what an incredible story with this, you know, after the game, like the whole subplot with Khaleesi and Mpimpi growing up in townships in Port Elizabeth. Now, you know, I, I suppose the romantic is thinking, like, it's not going to completely change what's happening day to day in South Africa. But when you see the videos of even people celebrating and races mixing and everything, it's, it's phenomenal. Like, and it's great for actually the Rugby World Cup because. Obviously, like it had a few issues around Typhoon Hagibis, and I mean, you guys were over there, so you, so you know firsthand what that was like, but um, and around the structures. But it's a great way for it to end because there was non rugby people talking about how this, you know, sport can transcend all and cure all. And yeah, I don't buy it. Was it. Positive. You don't buy it? I don't buy oh, it. I was hook, French, line, and sinker the, by the, the French team that won the Jesus. World Cup in '98 was supposed to bring France together, uh, Blanc Bleu Bear, and it didn't happen. Racial inequality in France is, is baked in. It's the same, I think, in South Africa. I think I, I can't wait to see what happens with the Ibn Ezebeth trial. It's yeah. going to be very interesting to see exactly what happens with that. He has fought back very strongly against the accusations that he faced. The drug culture in South African rugby is disgusting. It's absolutely everywhere, and we haven't talked about it today. The, the pre-tournament photograph that went viral that it made everybody talk again about the 15, 16, 17-year-olds who were doping to get contracts. Like I, I don't think it's a good thing that South Africa won this World Cup. Like I, I know the story is great, and I know there's the captain. A, there's has, has a brilliant story there, Gerald. There's no doubt about it as but, regards where Khaleesi and, and Mapimpi come and, and the divide there, and there's a lot of unrest in South Africa, and they spoke about a lot about that in their interviews, and it's it's getting worse, and there's a lot of trouble there, and there's a lot of issues and a lot of crime issues and safety issues, um, but I think and and the drug culture as well because. And it's unfair to kind of label these players in any way to say that any of them have failed tests. But except that one of their teammates did pre-tournament. The breakout player Diante last year. Do you know, um, like you know, it, he did. So a member of this squad tested positive. So I I find it difficult to celebrate their achievements as a squad when I know that one of their former teammates was doping and like a cocktail of drugs. So that that for me takes a big shine off um, South yeah, Africa. Yeah, and there is this fear that more will nearly come out after this because obviously that'll completely more than tarnish their victory it'll, it'll destroy 